Hello and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be setting up my buffer tank for my pressure washer but before that we're just going to go through everything that's been done since the last video. So in the last video you saw me dry fit all the pressure washer and heater in. Uh, so since then I've done a bit more so we'll have a look and see what we've done. So to start with we have fitted the exhaust and the cover onto the pressure washer and we have tightened up all the fittings so all this is really tight now all ready to go. Uh, I've tightened up all the filter fittings and everything around there and put the feed pipe onto it. I have fitted the chimney onto the water heater. I've fitted the Vibro X onto, is it focusing on that? The Vibro X, so that takes the vibration out of, um, out of the lance when you're using it. Fitted a 400 litre buffer tank and I have fitted two X-Line powered reels. Um, I'll come back to those in a later video and explain those a bit. But the one on that side is the pressure washer reel with 40 meters of hose, that's uh, 3 8 hose. And the one on that side is 50, 100 meters of 8 mil um, window cleaning hose. So that's pretty much what I've done at the moment. Um, I've also fitted on, so it's nice and tight, the pressure valve, uh, the return hose. So in through the side door here, I have fitted my diesel tank. So it's a diesel jerry can. Uh, you can lock it into place. And then there's just the flow and return valve uh, hoses there. Um, the reason I fitted in the side there, it was an idea of Darren's, is when you pull up at the petrol station, you don't need to open your back doors. You can pull up level with the, the pump, the petrol pump or diesel pump, and just flick off your lid and fill it up. So there is my diesel tank for the boiler. And so yeah, it's getting there now. So all we've got left to do is set up this buffer tank and uh, it should be all ready to commission. So we'll be back off up to PWS to commission it then. So let's get on and set up the buffer tank. So the first thing that we're going to do is set up the, uh, the return into the tank. And I've got here, uh, all it is, is it's a couple of bends, a couple of 90 degree bends, it, and we've got a bulkhead connector. Um, now these are really simple to use. All you do is drill a hole, there's a little rubber gasket in the middle there, drill a hole, poke it through, tighten it up and that should stay watertight onto your bulkhead. So that is a uh, half inch uh, bulkhead connector uh, and then uh, just a half inch uh, tail hose which will jubilee clip onto here. So I'm putting that somewhere around here so it comes up nice and level um, and so we'll do that now. Now these fittings don't need to be super tight because they're not under pressure uh, but still put a bit of PTFE tape around and we don't want them leaking into the van. We want to get rid of all leaks, keep the van dry as possible. So put a PTFE tape around them and then we'll just tighten them off. But as I said, they don't need to be super tight. And the other thing to remember with the bulkhead fitting is you are only screwing into plastic. So you don't need that as tight. You don't want to strip the thread on the plastic. You've got to be careful putting PTFE tape on soft surfaces because you can actually, especially on sort of brass fittings, uh, you can actually split the fitting by putting too, too, too much PTFE tape on and tightening it up too much. So just be careful with that. Just want to screw that in until it's tight. So 
So that is the first part of the bulkhead fitting put in. So that will now go through into the tank and then the, the nut screws onto the back keeping it watertight and then I'm putting a, a 90 degree bend on the back of it and the reason for that when I put it in the tank it will be out to the side rather than pointing straight down and the reason for that if there's a lot of water coming down and uh, the water level in the tank's low it can form turbulence in the tank uh, and set up cavitation in the pump so when I put it in the hose the 90 degree bend will be facing across the top of the tank reducing the flow of water coming straight down into the tank so we'll get this drilled and set up now so the hole you need for this is a 22 mil hole for the bulkhead connector to go through but I haven't got a 22 mil drill bit but I have got a 22 mil uh, step bit so what I'm going to do is drill a little pilot hole and then open it up with a step bit. Now what you want to do is whenever you drill a tank always make sure you can reach the drill hole because you've got to put the nut on the back of there and you don't want to have it so you can't reach it to put your nut on and to put your other bend on. So always make sure, take your lid off and make sure you can reach inside. So I've done that so I'm just going to drill it here. I marked, I've put a little mark on it where I want it. Try and keep as much of the swarf out as possible and I will need to clean the inside of the tank out afterwards. So let's do this. Just taking the swarf off on the plastic but I don't want it dropping into the tank. Now we just have to put our backing nut on and our bend on. There is a little rubber washer here. Make sure that's on there because that will definitely help stop the leaks. I've just realized trying to put this on and turning it sideways is making me a real donut. The back of there is facing straight across the top anyway, so I don't need to put a bend on it. So all I need to do now it's cut my hose, slide it on and jubilee clip it into place. I'm just going to mark my hose. Where I need it. And then with a sharp Stanley blade, brand new one. Just going to put that zip tie off that's been temporarily holding it in place. Now cut that. Make sure I slide my Jubilee clip on before I push it up. Now, if you're struggling to get it onto the hose tail, you can always dip it in a bit of hot water or put a bit of silicon grease on, something like that. Because of this bar here, it's not going up straight, but it will go on. So that's in place. Now, to do up a Jubilee clip, you've got a screw fitting on it. Uh, but you always slip doing them up. So I've got a little 7mm uh, socket on the end of my screwdriver. I've turned it right down low on the torque, which you can strip these with it. Just work your way up so you know it's tight. That is perfectly tight on there now. So you know that's going to hold it in place. So now I'm going to fit the float valves. Now, these are the float valves. I'll put a link to as much as I can on the description below uh, to the Amazon, to Amazon. Now, these are float valves. This is a three quarter inch float valve. Um, probably not the best one I could have got because this didn't come with any of the nuts or anything 
to work as a bulkhead connector as well. Some of them you can get uh, will work as a bulkhead connector as well. So you literally just screw them to the bulkhead. They also come with a little bend, not brilliant, just pushes on, doesn't screw on at, at all. Pushes on if you want it to, but so that is a three quarter inch float valve, which actually works much better than the old ball valve. It's also got, I don't know if you'll see it in, in there, try and focus on it. In here, it's got a little mesh filter. So if any muck does come through, then you're not gonna fill your tank up with bits and pieces. So because it's been a bit of a codge together, because like I said, didn't come, they're probably not the best choice of float valves, but I'll sort out a better one in the description. So on that, coming in, it's got a attached to, I've got a three quarter inch bulkhead connector. The reason I'm using three quarter inch rather than half inch is I've got the hose rail in the back there that will be, uh, that one will be mounted probably. That has got about 40 meters of three quarter inch hose on it. Uh, so again, a bulkhead connector with the rubber washer. So that will screw in through the side, but we've got to get it to join somehow. So I've just got a three quarter inch brass sleeve, uh, which will just screw on both sides uh, just to hold the two together. These come in side mount and top mount. Uh, I've picked the side mount, I don't know why I picked that top mount mount to be just as good. And then it will come off there, the other side will come off to a half inch, a three quarter inch hose tail which just screws onto the side of the bulkhead connector uh, and that will connect onto my fill hose which will go to my hose pipe. So I've actually got two of these to fit up. The reason for that is the first one, as I said, will go to the three quarter inch hose. The second one, which is exactly the same setup, will go to another hose which leads to the back of the van. So the reason for this is if your customer has got a hose pipe already set up and you think it's going to be a good enough feed, you can plug it onto that or you can use a neighbour if they've got a couple of hoses, you can plug one onto the back, one onto the hose reel and you've got twice the fill. With a 30 litre a minute machine you're going to need quite a bit of water so you've got the ability to fill from two places. So we'll put this on pretty much the same, drill a hole in the side, slide it in, do up all the bits and pieces. So let's get this fitted. Just the same as the last one, I'm going to drill a little pilot hole. Just thinking, can I get my drill in there? Yes. So I'm going to drill a little pilot hole. Uh, I'm going to mount one on each corner here. The flow is going to be going that way. The reason I'm mounting one on each corner is because I've got my fill here, so I don't want to foul that if I put a pipe in to fill it or to suck out or anything. So one on each corner. Uh, and then, unfortunately, these are a 26 mil hole and I haven't got a 26 mil drill bit. So I'm using a step drill again. This one is a bit more awkward. This is actually a 32 mil step bit. So I've just put a bit of tape on where I've got to go down to because I don't want to go down any more than that. So I'm going to drill from one side, turn it round and then drill from the other. So if you just drill from the one side, you've got that step in it. So uh, it needs to be drilled from both sides. So let's get this drilled, put on, and then it's ready to put the hoses on. I haven't actually got the hoses I'm going to use from this. I'm going to pick those up from PWS when I go up to um, commission the, the pressure washer. So let's put this on. Now you want this to go close to the top, but you also you've got the curve of the tank here so you've got to make sure it's missing that the lower down you go the less water you're going to get into your buffer tank so you want it as high up as possible so i'm going to put the center of it so two inches down two inches in that's our spot and then I will just check it with the nut to make sure that it's not on the bend.
So I am actually going to drill one more hole into the tank and that is for um, an air vent. So I've got a John Guest bulkhead connector here uh, and I'm going to put that into the top of the tank with a piece of hose coming out the top of it. One of the reasons I've used the John Guest is because it will be rigid hose so it won't be flopping over. So it'll come up through the top of the tank so any sloshing water it won't slosh out of the air vent but also it'll allow water in. Uh, with a 30 litre a minute um, suction on the pressure washer that is sucking quite a bit of water out of the tank so you'll need to replace that with a bit of air so let's get this one fitted so i thought i got a bit of 15 mil pipe in the shed but i haven't so i'll get some of that but just to show you this will go into the air vent connector and then that will just fit up at the side here maybe put a little clip on the top and just clip it to it and then the air will be able to vent out the top without the water splashing out of it. When I had my mobile pressure washer I just used to use a wheelie bin as a buffer tank but now as I've got the much bigger pressure washer I'm using a much bigger buffer tank so that's why I've got the 400 litres so when setting up a buffer tank that is something you've got to take into consideration. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this um, I hope you keep watching to see how I get on building the van. The next video will probably be of me um, setting up the pressure washer or commissioning the pressure washer. I've got to go back up to PWS, meet up with Darren again and uh, commission it all. So keep watching for that. If you are enjoying this series uh, of van builds then make sure you subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. Bye for now.